Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Today we're continuing on our Invest Arms Gamer Hawken build. We've got all of the parts browned to a, a pleasurable degree, I would say. We're ready to move on to our stock finishing as we're in the home stretch of this entire process here. So the last time we looked at our stock, we were doing a lot of filing and shaping to the stock to get it to match a little bit closer to the original Gamer Hawken. That we're referencing in Bob Woodfill's The Hawken Rifle book. You can see here some of the stock pictures that we were referencing. We've gotten the stock, you know, pretty close to, or as close as I'm going to be able to get it to that original. And now that we're ready to start building this up and finishing the kit, we're going to go through and sand and finish the stock. Now I've talked a little bit about what I want to do with this stock as far as painting some stripes on that. I'm going to be using a process that Mitch Yates shared on the American Long Rifles forum to introduce these faux lines into what he was building, a Lehman style rifle. Uh, but we're going to be experimenting with that on this Gemmer Hawken kit. So to get started with that, we need to sand this down and start whiskering. So that's what we're going to cover first. Back here at the vise, I have my stock clamped in through where the tang bolt would be up in here. And I've got the nose supported out here. Uh, we've matched all of the inlets to the hardware that we're going to be installing. So at this point, we're not taking off a bunch of wood. We want to just clean up the grain here to get it ready to accept some oil and some finish. So I've got some used up 180 grit sandpaper here. And I'm just going to be coming through this stock. Evening everything up and cleaning up some of those pencil lines and things. Again, not looking to remove a bunch of wood, just real gently, we're removing those file marks and cleaning up some of the areas where we've previously carved. Now I'm using my file back sandpaper technique, just like we have been through the whole process so that we get a nice even finish. And you can feel that grain change. Make sure you get everywhere around it. Up in here, we got to do a little bit of work. I don't know what the cat's doing over there, but he's having a grand old time. I'll come back out here to the nose real quick. Just brushing that some. Again, not a whole lot. Just enough to where you're, you can feel that those file marks out of your stock. Back here we have a little bit more of that on the wrist. We took a lot of material off the wrist and our cheek rest and our crest here. So you can see that color kind of transition. My hands were a little oily up in here. And you can see that kind of that color change as we sand that oil that was in that surface grain out. Out here I've got some file marks from when we were working that. We just want to take that out. And just like when we're cleaning up our metal, we can overlap our strokes a little bit to blend in these work areas. as we're rotating the piece around. Now I want to get underneath here. Around our lock mortise. So I'm coming in here like this, just adjusting the piece in my vise. Continuing the same work on the other side of the wrist here. Same light sanding. We want to make sure to really get this cheek weld, the cheek rest itself, really cleaned up. Because we removed a lot of material, if you remember. We have quite a few file marks in here. So I don't want to be there. 
This is kind of the presentation face. Now, depending on how far you'd like to go with this, this is the stage really that you could customize that cheek weld. Now, depending on how far you wanted to go with this, this is the stage where you could really customize your cheek rest to fit your cheek. I'm not going that far. Uh, it fits pretty well for me as it sits. So I'm just going to be leaving it how, it how I shaped it originally. Have a little bit of a concave surface there. It's enough for me. So if you ever worked with wood before and, and worked with staining it, especially when it comes to muzzle loaders, uh, when you apply a liquid, whether that's you know water, oil, or stain, that's going to raise up some of the grain structure that's in that piece of wood. So when we're building a muzzleloader kit like this one, it's really common for builders to go through and do what's called whiskering. And whiskering is applying a light coat of just water over the stock, drying it out with a heat gun, and this forces that end grain to curl up and expose itself to be sanded away and cleaned. By repeating this process a few times, we raise up and remove a lot of the end grain that would otherwise react to our oil and our stain, and get it out of the way so we have a, a smoother, more even finish with our oil and stain down the road. And already I can feel that grain standing up and catching on just my my paper towel here. It's really an interesting process and I think it reminds you that the wood is a, a natural material. You know, it can kind of feel just like a, you know, when you're working it, you know, it's not a whole lot different than, you know, feeling or we're looking at a plastic stock. But as you start to work with your wood stock, like we are here, you start to really see how it reacts to the environment and how, to, how you're working with it. And uh, I don't know, I like working with, with natural materials like this. We're just applying this just like you would in oil. Just a nice coat. Really, you don't need to get into any of the areas that are inlet or going to be covered. Really, you don't really even want to get a whole lot in there because the, those inlets will swell and that'll change how your parts fit together. You can see a little bit of that texture in there. Here's some of the areas where it's already dried out. I know it might look like or, or sound like some of those are, are paper towel fuzzies, but there's a lot of that wood end grain in there. My heat gun now. Just accelerate this drying out a little bit. And there you can see all those whiskers that we were able to pull up with just that sh short and quick process. So now you can do the next step with a couple different things. Uh, I like to use just a, a pretty coarse Scotch-Brite. I think this is really kind of a magic material for me uh, when building these kits. Or you can use your really fine or your finest sandpaper. This here is about that 400 grit. You can use either of those a lot of times to come in here and just rub those whiskers off. Because I'm not trying to remove any material, I'm not too worried about uh, backing it with my file. You can see there probably a little bit in the dust. Those little curls coming off of there. I'm starting to get a better texture now on the stock. Don't get nervous if this exposes some more file or sand lines because uh, as this wood changes color you're going to see stuff that you weren't seeing before so if there's something that you're seeing you don't like jump in there and, and use your time now to identify that spot and clean it up it's a lot easier to do that now than to power through just for the sake of getting it done and then down the road try to strip your stain or your finish out to go in and fix something. I'm always real gentle when I'm out here working the nose because we have that end grain that we don't want to catch and split. And you can really do this as many times as you want. I'm not the kind of person 
that wants a super smooth, super clean, polyurethaned, you know, shiny stock finish. I want it to look good, I want it to feel good, and I want it to function. That's not to say I'm, I'm using that as a scapegoat, but I don't like, uh, I don't, for my personal pieces, muzzleloaders that feel kind of plasticky with, um, with so much finish. I like a real natural finish like they would have used, you know, simple stain and simple oil and going from there. I think sometimes with the, the modern finishes that we have, we get a little too perfectionist with them. Um, and and I, I like to be able to feel the wood. And I think with things like polyurethane, a lot of times you get a coat on top of the wood that prevents you from, from engaging with the wood itself. That's just me though. You know, I don't mind if you like a, a nice, clean, really super protected, polished piece, you know, more power to you. As you're wetting this down with water too, if you haven't made any decisions about your stain or your oil or your finish, you can get a little bit of an idea of what the grain structure of your stock looks like. Um, this piece in particular, while we do have some visible grain here, we don't have anything uh, that's even reminiscent of curl. Uh, so this is kind of your chance to, to look at the stock as it looks wet like it will look when it is oiled and see what kind of natural figure you can work with or, or accent. This is the the point where people will tell you that uh, you know if you've gone for a more affordable muzzleloader especially if you're building like from a blank and uh, you've gone for a, a pretty low grade of wood without any curl it's kind of the regret stage for a lot of people when they realize how plain maybe their piece of wood is. And you can check that much earlier than now. Um, you know, but if you're wanting to build a, a lifelong muzzleloader, I think it's good to, again, put the time in and, uh, and invest when you can into as good of a part as you can get. The heat and the drying out is really what brings up that grain. So you might not feel anything as you're just applying the water especially as you go farther and farther into this, you know, your fourth or fifth or sixth pass, you're gonna start bringing up less and less. And it's kind of the point where you wanna go as far as you want to go. If you want it to be super slick, super smooth, you know, you might even do, you know, six or eight passes. But, you know, if you're just kind of going simple with it, three or four works pretty well. See, there still have a few fuzzies you can kind of see on the line between the stock and the background there where that the lighting changes some of that end grain standing up get our scotch bright it's on my foot now i don't know if i mentioned it earlier so i'm going to mention it again uh, when you're doing this make sure that you're using a fresh clean piece of scotch bright i have on the bench here the scotch bright i use to wipe down the metal parts uh, so there, it's pretty rusty and dirty. I don't want that rust and that dirt to get into the stock. It can kind of at times affect your uh, your oil and how it's sitting and, and change the color of things as that as that metal and that dirt bits start to react. So make sure you're using a clean piece of sandpaper or a wood only piece of sandpaper, something you've not used before on anything else. Now that I was talking about grain structure earlier, or the, you know the curl, when you get into this era of muzzle loading, you're really at the start of, of mass production, or at least where it really jumps into full effect, and where you're getting kind of the styles and the patterns that you see later in like Winchesters and Remingtons and things, where you don't have a real curly stock. You just have kind of a plain matte walnut stock all even color. So if you're building a Hawken, you know, it's not necessarily going to have, or, or a trade gun of some kind from that era, it's not necessarily going to have any curl. The curl is really coming in from a much earlier period uh, of, of muzzleloading history.
as you're doing this, feel the stock a lot with your hand. It's going to tell you where those spots of that raised grain are. And that's going to be an area that you want to focus on. You want to get that cleaned up. For this pass, I'm changing over. I'm going to use my 400 grit. I've got a few spots that I want to hit with a little extra care. And uh, the 400 is just the, the right thing for the job, I think. Being real gentle. You could use like a sanding block for this. Um, but I'm not really applying enough pressure. I don't think. <laughs> I could be wrong. And let me know if I am. I don't think I'm applying enough pressure to mess up much at this at this stage. With this sandpaper I'm coming in around these areas and just touching them up as well because that's just straight end grain and then I'm just kind of blending that in. Again, nothing super aggressive. Something just enough to get that cleaned up some. When we get to this step now where we're ready for oiling, there's going to be a lot of discussion just among the community about what kind of oil that you can and should use. Now I've got just a container of natural Danish oil here. This is the kind of oil that I use on a lot of stuff and, and my father does as well when we're working with wood. It's just a nice plain oil. It accents the natural color of whatever wood that you're using, but it's not necessarily a stain or anything. Typically at this stage, depending on what you're using or what you're making, you would go into a stain. Because this is some kind of European walnut stock and I want to go through and tiger stripe it, I'm going to be following what Mitch Yates was talking about in that article where he applies a coat of oil first to fill some of the pores of the wood to keep the stripes of the tiger stripes from bleeding. So if you're working with something like a maple stock or a beech stock where there isn't really any color to the wood and you're not going to be painting any tiger stripes on it, go ahead and jump forward to applying your stain. You're going to apply your stain just like you would your oil with a series of light coats that are rubbed into the stock until it kind of dries out and then you would apply some oil. Lots of other videos out there on YouTube on doing that and I encourage you to check those out if, uh, if you're not following me along directly. I've poured some oil out into a separate container there so we don't contaminate it and I'm applying it with a cheap hardware store brush. I do, uh, this, this brush gets a lot of use. It's just pretty much an oil brush. So it's pretty stiff, but it's nice. It kind of acts like a, like a scotch Bright, where it's kind of scrubbing the oil in. Now I always get questions because you won't see me purposely getting oil into the inlets or anything. Uh, as I've researched and, and been able to hold several magnificent original muzzle loaders, I've never seen an original that was stained and finished and oiled inside those inlets. Um, I've looked at really close to a hundred now from, from a variety of periods and none of them are stained or oiled in those inlets. Uh, there might be you know some residual oil from over time from cleaning but none of the wood in there is the same color as the rest of the stock where it's been stained. So, you know, a lot of contemporary builders will. They want a sense of, of uniformity in those inlets, um, but you don't have to, and that's, that's why I don't. Um, a lot of concerns about water and use and, and things leaking in and, and affecting the stock, but I think if that was a major issue, then we wouldn't have many of the original muzzleloaders today that we do because they've been exposed to that over time. Ripping off a section of my scotch bright here, letting the oil soak in a little bit. And I can also come in here and scrub that oil. Kind of force it into that grain. Now 
Now whether you're using a stock stain or an oil, uh, your first few coats are going to be, they're going to dry up pretty quick because the stock hasn't seen any moisture. Uh, really I guess since whiskering, but even before then it hasn't seen it since it was a tree. Uh, your whiskering, you obviously dried it out a lot and gotten that moisture back out of it. So expect to apply a few coats of your stain or your oil. You'll find that using a scotch Brite like this kind of cuts the shine out of the oil too. So if you're looking for a, a more of a matte finish, I really recommend using a scotch Brite on your oil. And that's just that straight Danish oil. There's no stain in here uh, giving us this nice rich color. Just that oil. Which I'm very pleased with. At this point, we're gonna let it sit and soak up some of that oil. I'm gonna come back and check on it every couple hours. And I'm gonna add another coat here at, towards the end of the day, and then we'll move on to, uh, to our striping.